Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to name ionic compounds. There's three different types of ionic compounds. The first type is when you have a main group metal of a non-metal. When I say main group metal, I just mean I mean you have a, a metal from the first column, second column, and third column of the periodic table. That's the that's the first type when you have a main group metal plus a non-metal. The second type of ionic compounds is when you have a transition metal with non-metals. Transition metals are the metals in the middle right here, the ones that don't go all the way up to the top. The transition metals are different from main group metals because transition metals can have multiple charges. And then lastly, you have the ionic compound of a polyatomic ion. We'll go into each of these in detail, but for this video, I'm just going to be focusing on the first type, how to name ionic compounds when you have a main group metal with a non-metal. I have a couple of examples set up right here and we're going to be working through this, this example. And the rules for naming ionic compounds is right here in blue. You name the first element and then with the second element you you have the root and then you add IDE to the end of it. It'll make a lot more sense when we get into the examples. So first example, NABR. We have two elements. We have Na is the first element, Br is the second element. So for the first element, we're literally just going to name it. The name of Na is sodium. Then for your second element, Br, we're going to have the root of it. Br is bromine. And then we're going to add IDE to the end of it. So instead of bromine, it becomes bromide. That means NaBr, its name is sodium bromide. Another example, Ca3N2. We have two elements, the first element is Ca, second element is N. So the first element, we just name it, the name of Ca is calcium. And then the second element is N, which is nitrogen, but we have to add the IDE to the root of nitrogen, which then becomes nitride. Notice here we have the three and the two, but we didn't use any prefixes, unlike naming molecular compounds. For ionic compounds, we don't have to use any prefixes to indicate the, the, the number of the elements. Next example, MGS. So first element, just name it. MG's name is magnesium. And then the second element, we're going to add IDE to the root of it. S is sulfur. So if we add IDE to the root of sulfur, it becomes sulfide. Then the, the name for MGS is magnesium sulfide. So these three, these three first, six, uh, first three examples show how we go from the molecular formula to its name. In the next three examples, we're going to take the name and turn it into the molecular formula. So to do this, let's first write out the elements and write out the charge of the element. So gallium is a GA, and then to figure out the charge, let's find gallium on the periodic table. It's it's right here. So to figure out the charge, you just count which column it's in. Elements in the first column is positive one charge. Elements in the second column is positive two charge. Gallium's in that third column, so it's going to be positive three charge. So we're going to put gallium three plus, and then chloride. Let's see where chlorine is. Chlorine is over here. So it goes positive one, positive two, positive three, and then this can be positive four or negative four, and it goes down again, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. So cl because chlorine's here, it's, it has a negative 1 charge. Next, we we check if uh, if these cancel these charges cancel out or not, because overall a ionic compound is going to be neutral. It's, gonna, it's not going to have a charge. So we have a positive 3 and a negative 1. They're not going to cancel out. So if they don't cancel out, what you do is you crisscross. You cross here. And you cross here, and then the, the superscript becomes the subscript. So you, you're going to get gallium 1 Cl3. So the 3 just came down here, and the 1 came over here. But when you have a subscript 1, you don't write it. That's it. So next example, potassium. Potassium oxide. First, write the, the elements with its charge. Potassium is in that first column. So it's going to be a positive 1 charge. And then... Oxide is oxygen. Oxygen is over here. And just review again, this is positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, negative 4, negative 3, and then oxygen is in the column of negative 2. 
then check if the charges cancel each other out. They do not, so then you crisscross. That means you're going to get K2 and O1, or just O. And then last example, strontium sulfide. So strontium is SR, and then, sorry, strontium phosphide, and then phosphorus is P. Now to figure out the charge, strontium is in that second column, so it's going to be positive 2. And then phosphorus is over here, so it's going to be negative 3. Then we check it, the charges don't cancel each other out, so again we have to crisscross, and then it gives us strontium 3, phosphorus 2. And that's it, and that's how you go from the, the name to the formula. Hopefully this, this helped in other, the other videos, we're, I'm, we're going to go over how to name, how to apply these rules for the second type and the third type of ionic compounds. Um, and if this video helped, like it, subscribe to the channel, because throughout this entire semester, I'm going to be posting up a lot of videos that's going to help you do better in chemistry and conquer chemistry. And if you like this video and you, I mean, if you like my teaching style and you're interested in individual tutoring, check out www.conquerchemistry.com slash online tutoring. And I'll include a link in the description below so you just can click on that link and go directly to the site. Now keep practicing and I'll see you next time.